Welcome. So my name is Brandon. I am one of the co-leads for the um, Committee of Inclusivity on the, on the Thomas Jefferson Alumni Action Group. And that is one of the groups um, that is partnered up with the NAACP in Fairfax to host the Commonwealth Series, HBCUs Beyond the Yard. And this is the second in our series. So last week we um, did one representing uh, FAMU. And today we're doing one representing Virginia State University or VSU. And so we just want to welcome everyone and also uh, thank both the representatives from VSU and also um, uh, Sujatha from NAACP. And so I guess, I guess just to give a little bit of a background on the organization TJAG. Um, so TJAG stands for Thomas Jefferson Alumni Action Group. And our mission statement is to enhance accessibility, inclusion, and innovation within STEM education in order to develop well-rounded individuals or well-rounded ethical 21st century leaders. And uh, the reason why I wanna give a high level overview of TJAG and our mission is because although um, the the name TJ, TJ is inside of that organization. In our organization, we really want to highlight the fact that we don't want to hoard any sort of wealth or knowledge or resources and make sure that all schools throughout Fairfax County and Virginia um, can have access to some of the resources that we've had the privilege of having. And so um, just on a switching gears on a more personal note about this Commonwealth series is that um, when I graduated from Fairfax County Public School, um, TJ in 2015, I had actually never heard of an HBCU. I didn't know what that concept was until I got to college and had made friends with people who had applied to HBCUs. And so um, after finding out what they were, I was like, wow, it's kind of unfortunate that I never had that opportunity to even know what it was and to apply. And this Commonwealth series is really an opportunity to um, engage with the representatives from these historically black colleges and universities uh, and bring awareness and exposure to these opportunities um, at these esteemed institutions. That way, you know, students like me who'd never had that opportunity could actually know about it and have the opportunity to apply to these schools. Um, and so this session will be recorded um, it's, and will be uploaded to um, our TJ page in order to allow people who didn't have the opportunity to be here today to also view um, today's session. And lastly, um, there is an option to select your language as well. So if you'd like any translations, um, you can select the language. And so the last point is that I will hand it over to David Howard, who's also another volunteer with TJAC, to provide introductions for our representatives. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you everyone for joining us today for the Commonwealth Series HBCUs Beyond the Art for our edition with Virginia State University. And today I will be introducing Angela Diggs, who is the Director of Recruitment at Virginia State University. Angela Diggs received her degree in marketing from Virginia State University's Reginald F. Lewis College of Business. Hailing from Topeka, Kansas as a presidential scholar, she also received an athletic scholarship for cross country and track and field. On campus, she became a VSU cheerleader, affectionately known as the Woo Woos, a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated and various other clubs and organizations. Angela now proudly serves as the Director of Recruitment for Alma Mater Virginia State University. As well, I will also be introducing a video to give everyone a sense of what you can experience at Virginia State University. You have the power right now to transform your life through education and a commitment to learn. You have the power right now to build a life you love through preparation, hard work, and dedication. You have the power right now to shape your life. No matter how hard it's been, you can always begin again. Do something that your future self will thank you for. Come to Virginia State University, a transformative experience. Well, hello, 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 and welcome. Uh, thank you for inviting uh, Virginia State University to uh, participate in this series. It's, uh, it's my honor and pleasure to speak with you today 
Um, again, my name is Angie Diggs, a proud alumni of Virginia State University, and it is my pleasure to share with you some information about Virginia State today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and share a very short presentation on Virginia State University. This is the lovely campus of Virginia State University. Uh, we sit atop a bluff overlooking the Appomattox River in Chesterfield County, Virginia. Beautiful tree-lined campus, uh, award-winning, uh, just a beautiful campus and a wonderful place to call home. We have a transformative mission at Virginia State University as Virginia's premier HBCU. We are one of only two uh, 1890 land-grant institutions in the Commonwealth of Virginia. That's Virginia State University and Virginia Polytechnic and State University, better known as Virginia Tech. Our mission is uh, to, to really, um, uh, to make lifelong learners, globally competitive leaders, and highly ethical uh, professionals and leaders in society. So a bit of statistics about Virginia State. We have around 4,300 students uh, on campus, and that does include our graduate school. We are, uh, we are able to award baccalaureate or bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, EDDs and PhD degrees. Uh, we have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio, which basically means you'll have a very small class size. Your average class size will be around 20 students. Uh, so you'll really get to know your professors. You'll be able to foster an intimate relationship with your professors uh, and really enhance that educational experience. Again, our main campus sits on 236 tree line acres. And we also have a 416 acre agricultural research facility or Randolph Farm. Uh, for our agriculture, animal science, veterinary medicine, and agriculture, uh, I'm sorry, our environmental science students to practice. We are a member of the NCAA Division II CIAA Conference for Athletics. Our male sports offered are football, basketball, cross country, indoor and outdoor, track and field, tennis, and golf. For ladies, we have volleyball, basketball, cross country, indoor and outdoor, track and field, tennis, and bowling. We have over 90 different clubs and organizations on campus for students to enjoy and really uh, enjoy that camaraderie with one another. Aside from the Greek letter fraternities and sororities that are on campus, we have social organizations, socially conscious organizations, uh, social organizations, academic, demographic, you name it, we've got it. And we also have over 130 different study abroad programs uh, which students are really able to experience education on a global level. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are currently suspending all of our study abroad programs. However, we do look forward to, um, to reestablishing them in the future. We have six different academic colleges within the Virginia State University umbrella. Each are separate and unique, but of course, together formulate a very comprehensive educational experience. Our College of Agriculture, uh, houses one of our um, premier programs as an 1890 land grant institution. Um, of course, that's where our veterinary medicine students practice, uh, environmental plant, soil science, and hospitality management, as well as uh, family and consumer sciences, or better known as fashion merchandising. Our Reginald F. Lewis College of Business is award-winning. It's named after the first African-American to build a billion-dollar corporation. If you're not familiar with Reginald F. Lewis, he's a graduate of Virginia State University, went on to Harvard Law School, founded his company, and the rest is kind of history. Our College of Education is incredible. We were uh, founded on the precepts of educating other individuals. Uh, so our, our foundation is in education and has, of course, expanded since then. Our College of Engineering and Technology has ABET accredited programs uh, where you can be awarded scholarships up to uh, all of your direct costs paid. College of Humanities and Social Sciences is our largest college, and it includes majors such as mass communications, English, history, and um, a lot of your um, really socially involved majors such as social work. Our College of Natural and Health Sciences is where all of our pre-professional and pre-medicine uh, and pre-dental and pre-psychology um, students are practicing. These are our different university 
college and program accreditations. The Virginia State University is accredited by SACS or the Southern Association of Colleges uh, and Schools Commission on Colleges to award baccalaureate, master's and doctoral degrees. However, individual programs and colleges also have accreditations on top of that. And this just lists a few of them. The tuition for Virginia State is one of the most competitive within the Commonwealth of Virginia. In-state tuition is just over $9,000 a year, and out-of-state tuition is just over $20,000 a year. Our average GPA for the admitted student to Virginia State is around a 2.8 with an SAT of a 920 and an ACT of a 17. Now that's the average. Of course, we have students who are achieving greater than, but we also op offer an opportunity for students who have uh, who have maybe needed to have an additional, um, additional support for their academics. Our honors program starts with students uh, with a 3.0 or better GPA with qualifying test scores coming in, or 3.5 GPA without test scores. And we'll talk a bit about that with our merit-based scholarships. So we have the provost scholarship and the presidential scholarship. Um, they are automatically awarded to students who um, uh, upon um, uh, their application. So for students who have a 3.0 GPA, a 1080 SAT, or a 21 on their ACTs, they'll be automatically awarded the Provost Scholarship. For students with a 3.2 GPA, an 1170 SAT, or a 24 ACT, they'll be automatically awarded the Presidential Scholarship, which is $10,000, which will renew every year as long as you maintain a 3.0 at Virginia State. With COVID-19, you also have opportunities for scholarships without submitting test scores. So with a 3.5 GPA and one of the following criteria, either you graduated the top 25% of your class or you have two AP, IB or dual enrollment classes with a B or better, or you're your school's valedictorian or salutatorian, you will also be awarded the Provost Scholarship. For students with a 3.75 GPA, and at the top 15% of your class with or have three AP, IB or dual enrollment courses with a B or better, or you are your school's valedictorian or salutatorian, you will be awarded the presidential scholarship. Now there are additional scholarship sources available to you. Uh, the Founder Scholarship is a scholarship specifically awarded to transfer students who graduate with their associate's degree with above a 3.0 GPA. There are also other uh, scholarships depending on your major, um, as well as athletic scholarships, ROTC scholarships, and scholarships with affiliated, uh, university affiliated organizations. You'll also may want to check with your national or local alumni chapters. Sometimes when there's a robust uh, number of alumni from the university in your area, they'll have an alumni association chapter that awards scholarships as well. And you can also check local civil organi uh, civic organizations and local chapter fraternities and sororities. At Virginia State, we have an extended admissions deadline and automatic scholarship consideration. You can ap apply for free online at vsu.edu forward slash apply, or you can scan that QR code on your screen. We are always available to take questions and look forward to seeing you soon. Now that is my presentation. I thank you so very much. Now it is my pleasure uh, to introduce one of our esteemed student leaders at Virginia State University, Mr. James Grant IV. James is a Senior Management Information Systems Manager from Norfolk, Virginia, and he serves as the Student Ambassador Coordinator for the Virginia State University Student Ambassadors. James, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad that you guys chose uh, Virginia State University. I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have about the university so far. Virginia State is a very family-oriented uh, university. It's, I think it's the greatest institution here on earth. Is there anybody have any questions so far? We are in webinar mode, so you can just go ahead with why you chose Virginia oh, State University. Gotcha, sorry. Oh, the reason why I chose uh, Virginia State University, Virginia State University is, like I said, very family-oriented, and it is a very close-knit community. 
Virginia State University offers some of the best programs that you can ever ask for, and they invest heavily into their programs. Um, I, as me being a business student, I have we have a class A faculty at Virginia State. And what I say this is that my professors actually worked in the field that they teach in. So I'm gaining hand more, uh, more experience versus you know, being taught out of a textbook. Um, so the good thing about that is when it comes to internships, Virginia State University is huge on networking and internships. We have a lot of great alumni and notable alumni who has graduated from this great university and you know, work in you know, different high position and different corporations around the United States. So the good thing about that is that in them also knowing professors, it opens up the doors to our students at Virginia State to receive a job or even an internship. So that's what coming a great benefit of Virginia State as well. Another reason why I chose Virginia State is that is because of my professors. My professors, they care about me and they care about all these students here at Virginia State. They also know your name, and that's due to us having not a not so big class size. So that's another uh, that is another benefit here at Virginia State University. If you're going to the student accounts office, they will greet you, and you know some will even know your name. So that's that's what another reason why I chose Virginia State. And another thing is the band. Virginia State University Trojan Explosion is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Virginia State University Band is pretty much a well-known band, as well as our gospel chorale. So I chose Virginia State for you to for a couple of different things. But the biggest thing I chose Virginia State for is for the transformation and the education that Virginia State offers. And that is my take. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's see if I'm on the screen. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate it. I'm just loving hearing all about it. And you clearly love your school so much. I love that. I yeah. love when people are just so happy at school. So I have some questions that some of which were generated beforehand and some of which uh, are in general that I'm asking to, you know, just everybody to get in a sort of sense of things. So feel free to say whatever, offer any information. This is a brand new series. So most of the people will be seeing this afterward, right? This is a mostly webinar series. So we're trying to keep it online and people can join in uh, when they find out that we're doing it and watch the videos. So, you know, we don't get to have all their, their questions as they come. So please, if you think of something, say it, share it so it can be uh, enjoyed later on when people um, uh, okay. discover that, what we're doing here, okay? Um, so this one, let me start with, uh, well, maybe both of you can have, uh, can answer this. Uh, as a state institution nestled between two larger private HBCUs, what steps does Virginia State take to establish and demonstrate itself as a school of equal footing? Awesome. That's a great question. question. Um, Virginia State University has uh, longstanding relationships with not only um, uh, stakeholders within the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, but nation and worldwide. So um, we aren't necessarily as concerned about size of our organization. It's quality. And the quality of the organization is inherent in the product that it produces. And mm -hmm. our students are uh, wonderfully successful. Uh, we have one of the largest job placement uh, percentages uh, within the HBCU community. Um, uh, but uh, aside from the other HBCUs in Virginia, HBCUs in general produce um, a, a greater amount of African-American professionals in the workforce and in America than any other institution. Um, there have been many statistics and, um, and, and many studies that have shown students that graduate from HBCUs are uh, more successful, uh, have a greater net worth, uh, and have a, a longer longevity in the workforce than students um, and, and of their own cohort that graduated from a predominantly white institution. So, you know, I, I'm, I really applaud the effort of all of the HBCUs in Virginia, um, but I'm particularly proud of, of Virginia State and their sustainability and really being able uh, to um, 
to really cash in on that niche of creating the best product, which is their students possible. Yeah. yeah. James, do you have, yeah. when you hear that answer? Yes. When you hear that answer from uh, Ms. Diggs, do you, what do you, like, you chose, you clearly chose Virginia State and is the great fit for you. When you see yourself there versus even like before you came to school, picturing yourself in other spaces, predominantly white institutions, perhaps the other HBCUs that you could have chosen to attend. Um, how do you feel like, you know, just sort of riff on what uh, Ms. Diggs said about, you know, your well, experience there versus what you might have experienced elsewhere for you? Well, first, I knew that I wanted to go to an HBCU, you know, and, and, and from the very beginning. Um, and the thing is, going back to what Ms. Diggs says, she talks about quality. So the thing is about our graduates, our graduates are with the great quality, actually, due to you, the, the time and energy that Virginia State invests in their degree programs to make sure that we are putting in that quality, you know, sorry, putting out quality students. Yeah, yeah. So what I can say, what I see my, seeing myself at other institutions, I have considered other institutions, but when you go through to Virginia State and you look at the classroom and you hear the information and the knowledge that are coming from the class A faculty is, is just priceless. Yeah. So going back to that quality thing is that, that it's all about quality to, to me. A school can have every single restaurant and every all the restaurants they can have, all the buildings they have, but at the end of the day, they can have all that. But it all goes back to quality, not quantity. So that's good. It sounds like they really invested in you. I just had one question here that just came in through the chat. Uh, could you speak about the demographics at the school and the diversity that you've experienced? Did you travel abroad, for example? That was a question, I guess, for you if you took a chance to travel abroad. Okay. This demographics, and maybe the both of you can answer that. Maybe the states can speak to the demographics or and the diversity, and you can talk about the study abroad and what those might be. Well, I, me, me personally, I have not got to study abroad, mm -hmm. but it is we do an offer a variety of programs in this study abroad category. And what I can say about the demographic of Virginia State is that, yes, we are going to be a predominantly uh, Black institution, being that we are HBCU, but we have also seen a increase in other um, ethnicities, in what I say, is that, you know, I see, I see actually more Caucasians at the university, I, I see more Asians at the university, and, and so on. So over the years, you know, you have, you've seen it grown. Instead of HBCU being 99% Black, you know, we have all, you know, increased our numbers. Mm -hmm. So me, me seeing a demographic, not only do we have, you know, just African Americans, but we have a huge variety of people of color. Mm -hmm. So you have lots of Jamaicans, you have lots of Ghanaians, lots, lots of Nigerians. It is so many different people to meet at Virginia State, so many different stories and experiences. So, it, it, so when you come to demographic, I mean, Virginia State just has it. Excellent. Thank you so much. You want to add anything to that, Ms. Diggs? How can I add to that? No, 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 no. <laughs> She's incredible. Just yeah. another testament uh, to, to the, the wonderful, wonderful students we have at Virginia State. Um, but yeah, James is absolutely right. We are an HBCU, which is a historically Black college or university, but we are not an OBCU. We're not an only Black college. You know, we're not an all Black college. And um, the evidence that, you know, the students are starting to see the demographic shift and change um, is, is evident. And, you know, I can see the numbers, you know, exactly through admissions. And I've seen our... Um, our, you know, demographic shift within the last 10 years in that, you know, we used to be, as James said, close to 99, but we were about 96% African-American 10 years ago, and now we're right around 85. Mm -hmm. So our um, Hispanic demographic has, has really, really increased, um, as well as our Asian Pacific Islanders and Caucasian students. Local students are starting to come to Virginia State uh, where once, you know, it, it was sort of taboo. Um, it's been also called, you know, the best kept secret. 
yeah. <laughs> in central Virginia, but the secret's out. And everybody understands that you can receive a quality education, uh, not just at Virginia State, but at a lot of HBCUs. Yeah. So do you think, let me ask you a question. This is just come to my, the top of my head right now. Um, do you think that as the demographic shift, what I would imagine, this is just me thinking, like I'm just thinking here, but that in an HBCU, I would imagine that there is the opportunity to tell a history in a different way than people are taught in public school. Uh, it's an ongoing uh, battle we have regarding the way every subject, but certainly history, social studies, even linguistic, what languages are offered, etc. Having um, sort of a default white setting and then, you know, everything else like circling out from there. I've imagined and what I've heard from people who've attended HBCUs is that was the first time that they learned so many things and they brought that and gr upon graduating from HBCUs, brought it back to their communities and are making demands of their public high schools that they mm -hmm. offer these, uh, you know, opportunities to learn well beyond the scope. How do you protect that? What is the framework? Because I imagine that it's news to a lot of people. When your demographics change, those people have not been exposed to that history either, but it's not the history they were ever taught in school. So, you know, how does that just speak to that? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as, you know, 99% to 85% is quite a big demographic shift. And it's great. I think it is great because the more people get that opportunity, the better it is for society, right? To right. learn all this way. I just love to hear if you guys are thinking about that, what kind of courses are offered to ensure that you maintain that fidelity to mm -hmm. a truthful narration? Um, well, I, you know, when people often think of HBCUs, there's usually some intimidation um, that's involved in that, oh my gosh, you know, 90% of this university is of one ethnicity, but they fail to realize, hey, if you go to a PWI, 90% of that university, 85%, 60, will be of Caucasian descent. So this is just the reverse. So if you, if I, as an African-American, can uh, attend a predominantly white institution and nobody thinks twice about it, then why not have a, a Caucasian student yeah attend an HBCU. Why is that so taboo? Yes. yes. Uh, so not only do we have courses that speak to that uh, um, phenomena, we also have courses that teach the history of HBCUs. We actually have mm -hmm. a professor that pioneered that series and that course, the very first HBCU course taught on a college campus uh, uh -huh. is at Virginia State University right, right, right. now. Um, so these types of uh, historical breakthroughs are, are happening here and it's really opening the eyes of, you know, not just the students who are able to take the courses, but as you said, the communities that they bring that information back to. I'd be interested uh, in hearing James's um, take on basically the um, the experience that he's had as a student and learning maybe some of these things for the first time, um, but, uh, you know, definitely in, in learning this cultural experience at Virginia State? Well, uh, some of the experience that I had, I'll give you the two, two different, uh, is, I'll give you an example. When I was in public school in the school system in Virginia, um, I took a course called African-American Literature in high school as well. And I've taken a course in African-American Literature here at Virginia State. The African-American Literature course in public school it, it was very limited, you know, when it talks about, you know, uh, the history. Most, the, most, the most things we talked about as African-Americans as slaves, that is it. Versus Virginia State African-American literature courses that we taught, we not only talked about, yes, you know, about the descendants of being slaves, but also the greatness of African-Americans. We go deeper into history. We start talking about Equinano. We start talking about Phyllis Wheatley. We start on uh, um, Ida B. Wells. We talk about some of these great people who have actually paved the way, has not had the spotlight. Yes, my, less we had uh, Martin Luther King. Yes, he was a great actress for, for uh, African-American people, but it was so many others that are out there that, that is, is a great secret. And Virginia State digs deep into our curriculum and pulls the best of it out by getting those other people and, you know, and teaches about them. I mean, when I came to, uh, that's not only 
course that I've took where I've learned so much about my own history. You know, we, we talk, we, uh, Virginia State, you know, just opened the John Mercer uh, Langston um, Institute. You know, that, that, that is something, you know, that is geared, you know, to teaching different, you know, uh, government practices and uh, political science about, you know, just, you know, about uh, African-Americans. So, you know, we, we've actually um, learned a lot in Virginia State history courses. So you just said John Mercer. I don't know what that is. You have to tell me about that. I don't know what that is. John Mercer Institute, is it a program? Is it a new building? Well, it's a new institute. It's called the John Mercer Langston Institute for African American Political and Leadership. That, is, it, um, is, it an, is it a building or is it a course? <laughs> it's pretty. It's not a fiscal building. It's, uh -huh. I think it's, it's a part of the School of Education. Is that right, Ms. Diggs? It, it's a part of the Lysacum series, yes. Uh -huh. John Mercer Langston does have a, a residence hall uh, named in his honor on campus. Um, but this is a, a series to um, series. to okay. enhance the the, the knowledge and political of political um, um, Contribution. contributions uh -huh, of of African Americans, especially uh, John Mercer Langston. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm like uh, taking my notes. Thank you, James, for sharing <laughs> that because uh, you know that's something that I think that uh, it's interesting as your as your demographic shifts somewhat. What a wonderful opportunity that is to open people's eyes who, you know, never really thought of beyond the default because we do a poor job with that. So that's really great. Thank you so much. Let me, um, I have a couple more questions. I have several more questions. Um, uh, how does the local Petersburg community impact the experience of attending Virginia State and vice versa? I guess that's a, that, com that question refers to just sort of the cultural, like the, the interaction between the community and the college. Um, well, I came to Virginia State as a student from Topeka, Kansas, mm -hmm. and um, I could say it is the exact reversal of the demographic of Topeka, Kansas at that time, which was maybe 10% minority, 6% uh, being uh, uh, Hispanic at that time, mm -hmm. um, so about 4% African American. Um, and the city of Petersburg is about the reversal of that, where it is a predominantly African American community, very small um, suburban um, uh, city, a small city, uh, about 20 minutes south of Richmond, which is the capital. So uh, the community in itself, I was, uh, I was excited, one, to not be in a city campus. Um, that just, uh, you know, some people, it, it's, you know, it really fits well for them. Um, but myself, I wanted more of a campus, like a closed campus experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so nestled, uh, Virginia State is nestled right in between the predominantly African-American city of Petersburg and the predominantly Caucasian city of Colonial Heights, mm -hmm. um, just outside of, or just on the borders of Chesterfield co County. So we have an interesting dichotomy in that most of the, the campus is uh, Colonial Heights facing mm -hmm. um, because we are across the river, which divides Petersburg. Uh, from Chesterfield County. So um, it is, it's an interesting uh, dynamic and demographic. When I was on campus, um, you know, you could definitely feel um, some cultural tension, mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, very early on and this, <laughs> this is many years ago. However, uh, now getting to work at the university, coming back some years later, you see the phenomenal change in that you know, the, the county has donated or, or has partnered with the university um, in their expansion efforts on an $80 million building. So the count, Chesterfield County partnered with Virginia State University for their multi-purpose center. You have a private citizen in Colonial Heights that donated some of her land uh, so uh, Virginia State University can expand. Um, on the Colonial Heights side. So, oh, you know, wow. the demographic has definitely changed and people are really embracing uh, Virginia State for the gem that it is. Um, and I, again, I, I tend to see that as probably attributing more to the increase in uh, demographic diversity. Uh -huh. I see. Yes, very small city. If, if you're from uh, Washington, D.C., you come down to Petersburg, you'll have a culture shock there, <laughs> just in pace. Um, but it's it's just a lovely little community. Well, that's really good to hear. 
sounds like it's having a positive impact both. I mean, having being invited to participate on a big project like that is a is a boon for the university. And that's so it's good that the community is opening its eyes to, like you said, a, a, a gem, you know. James, mm -hmm. do you guys um as students go in and out? Do you stay mostly in your closed, you know, since it is a closed campus, or do you, you know, tend to go back and forth? between Colonial Heights, Petersburg, back to campus? Is it something like that, that kind of relationship? Well, um, like, like she said, uh, that our campus does face more of the Colonial Heights side city. Um, mm -hmm. We actually do because uh, a, lo a lot of the resources that we need, like for like our local grocery stores, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Walmart and things like that mm -hmm. is in the city of Colonial Heights. So, uh, Virginia State students give great revenue to the students as terms as being a consumer. Yeah. So, yeah. so the thing, so when I, when I say that, I mean is that we pretty much buy all the products on the boulevard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much that is available. And, and anybody from Virginia State, when I say the boulevard, they know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and, and you know, and to having family. And, how, and having family go to Virginia State, back in Virginia State was VSC, Virginia State College. And they talk about the boulevard and, you know, they see how much it grown. So that tells me Virginia State students was a great investor, you know, in the growing of Colonial Heights as well. Mm -hmm. But yes, we do go back and forward um, from Colonial Heights, the city, into uh, Virginia State. Um, are you a legacy at Virginia, Virginia State? Jim, do you like, do you have, do your family go to school here? Yes. My, yeah, I have family great. went to Virginia State as well. Yeah. Uh, there was a question that just came to me in um, the chat asking if you considered attending other HBCUs. You had said you were only HBCUs. You're really considering that. But there was a question about what other ones you chose. But maybe if you were a legacy, you were already committed in your mind to Virginia State. I don't know. It's yes, I pretty much, I pretty much committed my, uh, pretty much committed to Virginia State. I only had one other HBCU that I, um, I, I wanted to attend. And the thing is, at first, um, um, I was a music major at first before I switched to management. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, go to uh, Bethune-Cookman University. Uh -huh. And uh, so the thing is, I wanted to switch my major. So Bethune-Cookman and Virginia State has a great music program. So, and I wanted to, when I wanted to switch to business, I knew Virginia State had the best business program you can ever ask for. So it was a no brainer. I love the school. I love the band. I might as well go to Virginia State. It's, it's, a, it's a legacy. Um, I got another question in the chat. Um, how about the active transport or buses? Do people bike a lot or do people, students mostly drive? Okay, so students, so what students do, in order for to have a vehicle on Virginia State campus, you have to be a sophomore and up. Only people that freshmen can have vehicles under conditions of, they have to have a job at Virginia State and they have to have a letter um, proving that your employment with the company's letterhead, or if you also have health conditions that you need a car, you know, to be from campus into your facilities you need to go to, mm -hmm. or if you live within an area of 25 miles. Mm -hmm. So those are the rules pretty much going to campus. So students pretty do uh, pretty much do drive on campus. Um, but another thing, we do have the VSU shuttle. So the VSU shuttle takes us back to that boulevard again. <laughs> it takes us down there. It takes our students to the area mall, to Walmart, and it takes us to a uh, it's uh, more of a shop, it's an outside shopping um, center, yeah. where it's more than one store within that area, you know, that you need, may need some hair products yeah. or you need some new shoes, you know, every, it's like a walking runway in Virginia State, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> see, everybody always want to look good. So, we have <laughs> shuttles that, um, that um, take you from, you know, to stores. And we also have the Pat Bus, Petersburg Area Transit city bus that comes through the campus as well that take you to anywhere else that the shuttle doesn't take you. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, how big do you, I think it was on your uh, slideshow mistakes, but I can't remember. What was the size of the campus? 236 acres. Um, I know that means absolutely nothing to students because <laughs> who knows what an acre is, um, but it basically means you can walk from one end of campus to the other end of campus in about 15 minutes. Okay, 
Okay. <laughs> so, it, so it's a fairly small campus. So it's cozy. Yes. Yeah, yes. close. That's Cozy good. campus. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, that's relative because I, I've done, you know, events and brought students on campus and they're like, oh my God, it's so big. How am I ever going to learn this campus? And then I have others that say, I have more students at my high school. So <laughs> it, it really just depends on the student. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, but yeah, the, the majority of the acreage that we have is on the farm. Yeah, and it sounds like, from the slide, I was just sort of taking notes on the slide, but I might miss the numbers that you, that's a great price point too, like so much to Absolutely. offer. Absolutely. Less than $10,000 a year for tuition oh. uh, for a, a highly awarded accredited institution. I mean, look. So many Virginia, options. Yeah, you know? so, so many, many options. Schools, yeah, so Virginia many options. Virginia State graduates the largest number of African-American computer scientists in the country. Really? Period. Yes, that's more than wow. MIT, more than Harvard, uh, more than Stanford. Virginia State University graduates the most African American computer scientists. That's you amazing. know, James and I are are, are both uh, products of the Reginald F. Lewis College of Business. My husband is is as well. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal business school. And I think the thing that sets it apart, which makes our students so great, is that they teach business principles that, you know, students, uh, silver spooners have been basically bred into these principles and we're learning them at a pace where these students can really absorb the principles and the knowledge and really be able to use it in their everyday lives. You know, my, my husband and I have owned several businesses. He has not had a job ever since I've known him, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and very, very successful, but really got that foundation um, at Virginia State with people who uh, invested in him, look like him and say, you know, if I could do it, you could do it, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and was never treated as a, uh, a number, a statistic, a stereotype or um, a social security number. You're not a butt in a seat, you know. <laughs> School um, student teacher ratio and that price point, it's really, really nice. Yes. Um, I just got another question here. Um, how uh, many HBCUs attract students from a certain region? Where are most of your students from? Well, most of our students are from Virginia. Okay. Um, however, our largest out-of-state demographic is uh, from the Northeast, um, DC, Maryland, North Carolina, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, but actually in the rounding out the top 10 is, is California, Florida, and Georgia. Wow, that's wow. really interesting. Um, and what region of Virginia are, would you say, you pull most, would you say? Mm -hmm. uh, Central Virginia. Virginia. Um, Northern Virginia is, is very, very close second. Mm -hmm. um, you know, due to COVID, uh, it, no, traditionally Northern Virginia will uh, house the most, you know, students from, from mm -hmm. Virginia State will get the most from Northern Virginia. Yeah. But due to COVID, um, we've seen in, uh, a, a really big uptick in students from the local area. Yeah. Um, so um, at that price point with all of those perks for like GPA boosts and different classes and different spaces, that's a really yeah. wonderful thing. It's like, it's such a public boon, honestly. It's a really nice thing. Uh, another question from the chat. Uh, what would you say is a hidden gem of VSU? For example, language labs, gyms, like that kind of thing. My hidden gem may be out of date, so I'll defer to, <laughs> to James. You can share yours that. after. James, you tell yours, and then Ms. Diggs can tell hers. Um, oh, I'm sorry. My phone's ringing. So Just... this is when, when you say hidden gems, uh, and this going to go back into when you uh, mix in with the price point as well when I say hidden gems, is resources at Virginia State. Mm -hmm. Resources is a hidden gem at Virginia State. And for the price point, I can say with my hand up, I have never had to pay for a textbook at Virginia State, never. It came a part of my tuition. And another huge thing is this new, this is this new thing that we use called ERP and SAP systems. ERP and SAP systems is huge right now. And then a lot of companies. And the thing is a lot of other universities actually do not use ERP and SAP. I don't so, even know what it is. I hope you're going to tell not me. Only, not, <laughs> only, uh, not only HBCUs, but uh, um, PWIs as well. 
And the thing is, Virginia State teaching ERP and SAP systems, you are guaranteed to get a job. If an employer come to you and say, can you do business analyt uh, analytics on uh, SAP? And you say, yes, I can it's do it. Business talk. That's why I don't even, you're talking, I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> James, explain what ERP and SAP systems are. So ERP and SAP systems is, 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 is databases, is interconnected databases. So basically when you have the SAP system, it can be designed towards marketing, it can be designed, designed towards um, accounting, it can be designed uh, towards uh, uh, business management or uh, uh, cybersecurity, it can be geared to anything. So an example of the ERP system will be something like Quicken. Quicken is a, uh, is a type of SAP system. And the thing is that um, SAP is pretty much the background of the system. What you're looking at at uh, Quicken is you're looking at the interface, how the system actually calculates, how the system actually works, that is an ERP or an SAP system. There are two oh, different types of platforms, but do the same. Look at me coming in here and learning. I thought I was just going to learn about HBCUs. Oh. I thought I was going to learn about Virginia State. I'm learning all that <laughs> stuff. Thank so, you, James. So being that Virginia State teaches ERP and SAP systems, that is a great resource. Because when employers come to Virginia State and say, hey, I need a student that is good at business analytics, and you can sit at a computer and can, can, and program and know how to use a whole SAP system, they offer you a job. So that's that's one of the hidden gems is the resources. The A Center, Academic Center of Excellence, those fine young men and women in there, they, if you don't know how to uh, type a resume, I don't know what a resume is supposed to look like, it, they will help you. They have different resources to help you find jobs. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just so, it's just so much that, we, that the resources that we have, I, I can't even talk about all of them. Oh, that's lovely. Go ahead. <laughs> You're making people have, when they finally see this, they're going to be like, well, <laughs> well, this young man surely does love this place. <laughs> yeah, great. No, it's, just, it's, just, it's just, it's just like, like I said, it's just the resources. And, and I've had, we have this thing called Handshake. Handshake is a program where you can actually put in your resume, put in your, your major, put in your skills, put in your GPA, you put a whole lot of stuff. And employers like IBM, Google, Apple is on the other side and they look at this information and they invite you to other webinars or things that they're having. And I've actually um, secured three interviews just off of using Handshake. And I even got a higher position offered to me after graduation within the company that I already work in. I didn't even know I was a student at Virginia State. Oh, that's wonderful. That is so great. Oh my gosh. Let me see another, uh, hold on. That, that makes my hidden gem look really <laughs> good. His, his gem was I, good. His gem was good. His yeah, I was just gonna talk about the food. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go with his. <laughs> So the food is good too. So the food, food is, is good. good. Food is good too. Lots of resources, but the food is good too. That's important. The food is good too. Is an important one, you know. Um, okay. Question: HBCUs are also known for their networks post graduation. Describe how your VSU network has impacted you or others whom you matriculated professionally. With whom you with whom you matriculated professionally. Wow. Um, that's actually a, a great question and a great observation in that every African-American millionaire that I know personally is a graduate of an HBCU. And that speaks volumes, one, in that, you know, we do have that network, but two, we do produce that level of excellence. Um, you know, I'm not quite there yet, but we're on our way. Um, but all of our business connections have have started and were birthed at Virginia State. You know, my husband and I's first business, we started as students at Virginia State. We've had professors, not only as clients, but as business partners. And, you know, many of them I still have in my cell phone today, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even though we might not be in business together anymore, but, you know, we still may interact on, on, on a different level. And, you know, that connection is really worth its weight in gold. In that, you know, at other institutions, if you think about it, 
you have um, alumni networks or just networks in general uh, from, 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 you know, the majority um, from Caucasians and that if you have a CEO, a Caucasian CEO of a company and he has his network of Caucasian CEOs in the company and they have a son that's graduating from college, who do you think he's gonna call to give them their first job? His other network of CEOs. Well, if you attend, uh, and, and I, I definitely don't wanna put down any you know, person of color who's attended a PWI, trust and believe, you know, the success levels there are, are incredible as well, but the networks aren't necessarily as uh, accessible because the, the probability that you will be able to break into their network mm -hmm. is a lot lower than, mm -hmm. you know, you know my, myself, if I have a colleague um, or, or a friend who's, who's high school student or college, recent college graduate needs a job in IT, well, I have connections all over, you know, all over the country um, I have uh, an opening right now in marketing. So if you have any graphic designers or digital designers, um, but we all have those networks. So as an African-American CEO or a CEO graduate or graduate of an HBCU, you have that network to tap into, you know? So I'm an HBCU grad. I can reach out to my professors who can reach out to their colleagues or yeah. to, um, you know, my, my classmates you know, they could reach out to their parents. Yes. So we have a very strong network that we've built to be able to ensure uh, sustainable success. Because success is one thing, you know, I could be successful myself, uh, but I won't be significant until I create success that's in nice. someone else. Yeah. And that's what HBCUs are, are really, really good at providing uh, sustainability and significance within the African-American community. I completely, that's a, that's a really great way of putting it. Just um, to pick off back what she said, yeah, it, 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 like um, I can use that as an example as well. Like uh, here at Virginia State, example, graduation comes around. You would not have to find any company to take your pictures. It is something <laughs> <laughs> that is a mass comm major that will take your pictures. It is somebody on campus that does hair. It is somebody on campus that does nails. It is somebody on campus that fixes computers. It's, it's the networking it, 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 on Virginia State. It's just amazing in the community. And these, like she said, some of these partners will stick with you for life. Yeah. That's really nice. That's really, really nice. Um, before I forget, because we don't need to do this now, but somebody has asked if we could show the, the slide that you shared earlier that had the price point, the scholarships. Those are really nice. I won't, we won't forget. I just want to make sure that I <laughs> ask all these questions before we do that. Um, Will do. Okay, so somebody on this panel, remind me if I forget at the end, or you do mistakes, please. Okay. Um, what would you say is the most common misconception you hear or experience when people discuss getting an education at Virginia State? Um, I can actually <laughs> um, speak to that from personal experience. Um, little known Black history fact, I was <laughs> um, actually, um, I had very negative connotation associated with HBCUs um, in high school. Uh, again, I came from Topeka, Kansas. We didn't have a lot of talk about HBCUs and any information that made its way to us was usually negative, you know? So when it came time for um, university selection, I actually applied and was admitted to an Ivy. And that was my path. My sister had done the same thing before me. Um, and uh, that's just the way that we were trained to go. And it wasn't until um, my sister actually took an, an internship over her summer year. She's older at uh, Fisk University, a very small HBCU of about 800 students in Nashville, Tennessee. And she was a, a biochem pre-med major, um, ended up uh, going on to Duke and getting her MD, PhD. She's now a, a professor of anesthesiology and a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist at the University of California at San Francisco. Had to plug my sis there. Um, <laughs> but she took that internship over the summer and completely changed, you know, her, 
her view of what HBCUs are, what they're for, what they do, um, and, and who they produce. So when she came back and told me about it, I said, well, you know, let me get some more information about HBCUs, because you think about it, where is this information coming from? It's not coming from graduates of HBCUs. It's not coming from people who have ever visited an HBCU. So let me go ahead and get that information for myself. So um, after that semester, she actually transferred to Fisk University and finished her undergraduate degree there. And that's where she went on to Duke uh, for her MD PhD program, was uh, getting bitted on and fought over from Duke Brown, Harvard, and um, Johns Hopkins, but Duke won. <laughs> so that's where she went. So I took a black college tour in high school and visited um, all of these wonderful institutions. Um, this, this black college tour was during my spring break. We went from Washington DC down to Atlanta, Georgia and stopped at as many HBCUs on the way from uh, Bowie State to Howard, um, Virginia Union, Virginia State, Norfolk State, Elizabeth City State, North Carolina Central, uh, down to uh, the big three in, in Atlanta, the Morehouse Spelman and Clark Atlanta. And it was just something about the campus of Virginia State, something about the people, something about, I don't know, the way the sun reflected off the fountain. I, whatever it was, as soon as I stepped off of the bus at Virginia State, I had this overwhelming sense of peace, calm, and home. And I said, this is it. This is where I belong. You know, it was an interesting conversation calling my mother and saying, hey, you know, uh, that school you just sent $600 to, uh, yeah, I don't wanna go anymore. But, <laughs> um, but eventually she knew, you know, the student that I was, the person that I was. And once I had that resolve, um, there was really no change in my mind. So um, we booked a, a plane ticket right then and there for our return trip to Virginia State with my mom. And she said, I get it. As soon as she came to the campus, she had to book an appointment to speak to the president to let her daughter come all the way out here. But um, uh, she said, by the time you already applied and been accepted someplace else. So, oh, I was deposited someplace else. So, you and you hadn't applied here. So, you this was a complete change of. After having applied and been accepted and deposited, you shifted focus, took the tour, found home at Virginia State, and had to get special dispensation in order to apply. And I was admitted to Virginia State in March. Wow. Of blah, blah, blah. Year. And um, yeah, Amazing. thank God, everything is story. In that is a heck of a story. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that that's such just, a great story. It gives me that's, goosebumps. That's amazing. That's just the power of knowledge. You know, I was ignorant and you don't know what you don't know. And until that, you know, that light bulb went off until I actually was able to see it for myself, I, I would have never have known. That's amazing. That's amazing. Truly transformative then too, because, you know, that's just, that's amazing. Uh, James, if you want to add anything to that, because uh, it was a question was about like, what are the negative connotations? And I know that you were committed to going. That's a very different experience, right? So Ms. Diggs <laughs> is saying she was 100% headed the other direction till the last, but the 11th hour she shifted gears. You knew you wanted to go to an HBCU from the beginning. So that's a yeah. very different experience. But if there's anything you wanted to uh, explain, things that you need to explain to other people, things that people don't know, misconceptions, please share. Well, it, uh, uh, one thing I, I, you know, is the thing where they say that, oh, you don't receive a quality education from the HBCU. That, that is a huge stigma that goes around that HBCUs are party schools, HBCUs are this and HBCUs are that. The thing is that you can say anything that you want out your mouth, but are things on black and white says it all. Virginia State University uh, is, has very quality education. People from my education program here at Virginia State are very well known. Everybody knows that Virginia State creates good teachers, produces good teachers. Uh, I, I, I can say that every teacher that I've had that was a graduate of Virginia State taught in a way that I could understand and they can map to different teaching styles of all the students. 
And, and that, that was one of the biggest things, you know, what, that I love about going to Virginia State. So then the thing is, we have our 2019 National Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Virginia State grad we can as just well. put that in the chat for the 2019 National yes. Teacher of the Year. And, and another thing is, well, one thing we can brag about Virginia State University from the National uh, Council of Teacher Quality. If you will look at this, I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> If you would look at this, look at all the grades that other universities have received and look at Virginia State University. Huh, wow. would you look at that? Oh. Would you look at that? It's, I'm it's taking great. note. It gets graded every year in the National Council's Teachers of uh, Quality. It gets graded pretty much every single year. And Virginia State pretty much was in the news about receiving that rating. So you cannot tell me that you don't receive a quality education from an HBCU. And that that's is really, that's really, that's really great, you know. And yeah, I, I don't, I think that I, I jumped in without even telling you who I am. So, you know, <laughs> I, I'm the education chair for the Fairfax County NAACP. And I am always, always like fighting for why we don't have more black teachers. We have a 80% white teacher force with a very diverse student body. So I'm gonna, I just noted that down because now I know where we need to go look. I don't know what yeah. the, and, and the, the thing is. Going. that, And the thing is, I know people in, my edu in our education program, they're working in the classroom from some people from their sophomore year, getting, getting gaining experience. That's and, why it's clinical, your clinical grade is an A. You've been doing that for a long time, I mean. Yes, and then, you know, in Virginia State, at Virginia State, and I believe also NCANT is one of the biggest producers in um, African-American teachers. So it is, so it's, it's the little school on top of the hill that is producing some good teachers out there. That's really great. To hear. I am so glad you just told me that because I'm in an ongoing, ever, ever constant battle with our school system. And this is something I needed to know. And I just learned it today. You're teaching me a whole lot yes, of things. Tell her that's time to come to Virginia State. <laughs> <laughs> Send to our teachers. Uh, okay, I have more questions. Um, okay. As Virginia State is a smaller state school, Oh, you already answered this. Uh, okay, let me ask with the second part. Do many graduates pursue um, opportunities out of state? Let's talk about that. What do you see that graduates of Virginia State are doing? The question, the first part of the question was about diverse, diversity of the student body, which you've already answered. The second part was where do people go when they're done? Um, so the College of Business does a really great job of tracking uh, their students. Uh, I'm sure James has, has some more information on, on that and, and is able to speak on that as some of his, uh, um, uh, I was going to say colleagues, some of his classmates have gone on, um, you know, and, and, and worked in different areas. Myself, I think I'm the only one left <laughs> of my cohort that is still here in the area. Everyone else is so so, so spread out. And, and, you know, this isn't just, you know, around the country, but around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, it's the weirdest um, 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 call. I, I forgot the app that we use uh, to talk to one of my girlfriends who's teaching uh, uh, English in Korea right now, but it's the weirdest thing because it's light over there and it's dark over here. It's weird hours, <laughs> but yeah, all over the world. That's great. That's great to know. Um, hold on. Okay, could you please describe any recent investments in like infrastructure, buildings, anything like that, upkeep, that kind of thing? I'd love to hear about that because sometimes there's this notion that when people want to hear about what the investment is and in HBCU is making in its uh, buildings and facilities and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> I was told by my mentor a while ago, if there's not dirt being overturned, then <laughs> they're doing something wrong at the school. So there's always something going on. You know, if we don't uh, just have a project completed, um, we have one in the works. Um, so our most recent um, uh, infrastructure uh, projects that are have been completed um, is our multi-purpose center. It's a, an 80 plus million dollar um, facility, multi-use facility. Um, it's now our region's largest uh, facility for um, athletics, 
concerts, um, ceremonies, um, all of our regional high schools have their graduations there. Um, just an incredible, incredible facility. Um, we have just been approved within the state budget to, um, to break ground on our new academic commons building. Um, so we will begin demolition of one of our, our beloved buildings on campus to make room for this. Yes, Harris Hall will be no more in just a few short months. What do you um, get rid of Harris Hall versus the Commons? So Harris Hall uh, was uh, the former home to WVST, our Virginia State University radio station, uh, uh -huh. as well as our English department, mass communications, um, and, and other um, humanities departments on campus. Our, our kiln, our ceramics lab, um, and our IT lab used to be down there too. But Academic Commons will not only house, um, you know, academic buildings, uh, I'm sorry, academic majors, um, but it'll also be more of an expansive student union. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I saw the, the layout for it, the plans for it, it's going to be a beautiful addition to the avenue. So University Avenue is kind of the center focus of campus and this building will be on the avenue. We also have approved in the budget um, to build a new admissions and institutional advancement building. Um, and that's going to be near the athletic com uh, complex, near the, the football field. Um, we have already um, finished a welcome center, which is in the new multi-purpose center for uh -huh. students to come when they're getting tours of the campus. It's a big lounge area. There's a conference room and just places like a wall of Virginia State where students can, you know, take pictures and see themselves at VSU. Um, um, so we have a lot of programs that are in the works. We've just done another capital uh, improvement um, of our riverfront. So Virginia State has prime riverfront real estate um, and we recently demolished an, an old unused building on, on the riverfront and turned it into just a beautiful patio um, and event space where you could just go and overlook the river. So it sounds like there is an ongoing concept of ever improving mm -hmm. Virginia State. That sounds great. Uh, thank you. If you're not improving, you're settling. So we have to keep it moving. That is really, really nice. Um, you have talked about that. Uh, I think you had one of these on the... Oh, Ashley, this is a really good question. Um, how do you make sure our kids are nurtured on a Black campus, but also have firm understanding of the global world they enter, especially those who plan to work in science, medicine, and law, where there are far fewer African Americans, I would just if you sort of you but you both sort of alluded to this, but I thought that concept of nurture is something I wanted you to 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 talk about. That there were some several things that, to my mind, kind of answered the question about the networks, the way you take care of one another, but just in terms of like black spirit, like that idea of what it means. Like you were gonna go one place and you turned around and felt like this is home and you're there now. There must have been something, and it, obviously you still work there, right? So that was definitely home. So just speak to that idea of nurture and support in these places where Black professionals are um, not always found. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that also, um, it, it speaks to some of our preconceived notions about HBCUs in that, you know, we don't have a lot of African Americans in uh, you know, in tech and biotech in these fields, um, you know, that are really in high demand right now. Um, but we also have that same connotation that HBCUs are, you know, the, as we spoke to some of the negative connotations for, and, and some of them I thought as well, for, you know, African-American students who can't get into real schools. So when you couple that um, with people's fears in that, well, if they go to this school, will they be prepared for the outside white world? Um, and the reason why HBCUs are so successful is because they prepare students to become uh, professionals. And, you know, sometimes when you're in an environment where you feel stifled, where you feel as though you may be uh, apprehensive to speak out, to speak up, 
uh, to include yourself, or you may be in an environment where you're being excluded, you may not have the same opportunities to excel as those who are in an inclusive environment where uh, you're encouraged to not only speak up, but speak out uh, and participate in, um, in a lot of the, uh, in the class discussions, in the, in the labs. You know, you don't have somebody apprehensive to be your lab partner because you don't have this share the same shade of skin. So you're able to fully embrace this educational experience without a, all of the, the apprehensions of, you know, am I going to be accepted? So that's already out of the way. Um, and not to mention the smaller class sizes, um, the, the ability to interact with an actual professor um, is, is paramount especially entering into the STEM fields. You know, uh, a lot of schools utilize TAs or teacher's assistants, um, which are students who have recently graduated from undergrad. They're usually um, pursuing some sort of postdoc degree uh, or, or postgrad degree and um, are not much older than the students whom they are in fact teaching. Uh, we don't utilize TAs at Virginia State. We don't utilize teacher's assistants. Our professors are industry professionals um, who have that knowledge and experience to be able to, you know, foster that information into the student, but not only that, but see where it can go afterward. A, a teacher's assistant can only teach you as far as what they have learned and they have zero experience in the field that they're trying to teach you. So how far can you go with that information? It's all theory. Um, at that point. So um, the reason our students are so successful is because of the experience that they have at Virginia State to be able to learn to their highest level of proficiency without any type of um, uh, forces or factors that are preventing them from their success. James, if you wanted to, if there's anything you had to add to that about feeling of nurture um, I, I, I mean, I just like when you talk about your school, actually, which is why I am asking you this question, which I already know your answer, I feel like, but I would love to hear you answer it anyway. Um, when it comes to um, the nurture and, and everything, it, usually when our students have job placement, when they get uh, somebody to offer them a job, it is a lot of times, especially you from experience from the Reginald F. Lewis College of Business, it's already a Virginia State student who, who are currently working there. Wow. So, and, and, and the thing is, and this is playing back when she says Virginia State, you know, does a good job, you know, the business school does a good job with, you know, keeping up with the graduates of Virginia State. We've just, last semester, had a meeting with some of the recent graduates starting from uh, about 2012, all the way up to at least 17 of uh, graduates from Virginia State who work for Wells Fargo, IBM, Deloitte, you know, some of, you know, those corporations. And they talk about how it is in the, organi the organizations. So the thing is, we have them actually as a part of networking. So we network with them. And the thing is, they have that nurture. So we can learn how to navigate as being African-American in a uh, organization where there's not, you know, lots of, you know, African Americans that are there, so that that that's what I have pretty much, you know, have to say about that. But it, we have different ways that we um, are nurtured. That's good. <laughs> that's great. Um, I have a, a a wrap up question, but before I do that, somebody did ask to see those slides that you shared, and I don't want to forget to put that up there. It was the ones. Um, well, you talked about the, the tuition, I'm sorry, yeah, the tuition point and then the various scholarships that you have available. Sure thing. So this is the tuition. It really is like just such a bargain. Ooh! Let me, uh, whoops. Can you guys see the tuition slide? Yes. Okay, awesome. So right around $9,154 in state, that's our last uh, tuition. The, the Board of Visitors usually votes on whether or not there will be an increase in tuition. We have not increased our tuition in the past few years. Um, well, year and uh, the year previous due to COVID. Um, the, the 
first year, uh, we did not increase tuition due to um, a grant from the state. So we didn't have to increase it. That was great. And then the next year, because of COVID, we also received a separate grant. So we didn't have to raise tuition costs. So it's been frozen for a couple of years. Nice. And this is our scholarship slide. So um, basically, there's two paths to scholarships. For students who have uh, qualifying test scores, the GPA requirement is a bit lower in that um, you'll begin um, scholarships with a 3.0 GPA, a 1080 SAT or a 21 on your ACT. And that's $6,500 per year automatically awarded as long as you maintain a 3.0. Uh, and the same uh, stipulation goes for the presidential uh, for students who have a 3.2 GPA 11.7 SAT or a 21 on their ACTs. So uh, with the first method of obtaining scholarships with test scores, you have to have the GPA and the test score, but it doesn't matter which test you take. And we also super score. So if you've taken the test more than once, uh, we'll combine your highest out of each category uh, to make your highest score possible. So if you don't have test scores, it's a bit higher GPA qualification, um, but you just need the GPA in one of those um, categories listed below. So you can either get it through class rank, um, through your, um, your upper level, level classes or um, valedictorian or salutatorian status. So, you know, some schools don't rank. Um, so we wanted to offer another path. Um, some schools don't offer um, advanced courses. So really trying to be, you know, as inclusive as possible for scholarships. Can you share this slide? I think it might've been the one after this that also has different scholarship stuff that uh, I think, yes, this, this. Is there we go. Stuff. This is a good yes. one too. So yeah, these are additional scholarship sources. Um, I know in the STEM field, especially in the fields of computer science and computer engineering, we have mm -hmm. tremendous uh, incentives and scholarships for students um, who are looking to go into that field. We want to remain number one <laughs> as graduate uh, graduating the most African-American computer scientists. So we are offering a lot of incentives there and that will be through the department. So that's where you see those VSU departmental scholarships. Um, and some of the other ones are, you know, suggestions toward the bottom of where to look for additional scholarship sources. Um, but we are a member of the USDA 1890 uh, scholarship program, um, which is uh, only available to 19 uh, 1890 land grant HBCUs in the country and Virginia State is one of them. Um, so if you are in an agriculture or agriculture related field and have been admitted to one of those 19 HBCUs, you may wanna go ahead to the USDA website and check out their 1890 scholarship program. Uh, it offers up to full direct cost paid, tuition fees, room board, and internship after, uh, uh, during your college years and postgraduate employment. So you definitely wanna go ahead and check that out, as well as the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund, which is Virginia State is a part of. Um, which is for uh, public HBCUs. And the UNCF is for private HBCUs, but they open their scholarships up to students who have um, been admitted to all colleges. That is awesome. That is awesome. Just wonderful. Uh, so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to close up my questions with, this was a really good one. Okay, the three words question. What three words would you associate with your VSU experience? James, Frank? I think you're muted. I'm gonna say, go ahead. Oops, okay. Go ahead, both of you, both of you, yes. Um, I would say excellence, leadership, and transformation. Wow, nice words. Now again, Angela's like, oh, his are better than mine. <laughs> no, he stole my word. But I mean, that actually, it just, it, it the synergy there, um, it, it, it just speaks volumes. Um, but I, I was going to say family, focus, and transformation. That's just wonderful. Thank you so much. Just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I don't know if Malika has came here and has gotten here yet. Um, I don't know. She was going to do the 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 the, the close. Oh yes, she is here. Um, 
Oh, great. Excellent. Malika, I, if you are ready to close up and say goodbye to our wonderful, wonderful guest, thank you so much. I'm so appreciative. I will hand it over to you. Great. Yeah, I want to say thank you so, so much to James and Miss Dix. I also, like Sujatha, learned so much from this presentation. Um, so I think some of the things that really stuck with me was um, you guys helping to demystify for a lot of people what an HBCU means. So, you know, emphasizing that HBCUs are very diverse in terms of the student body, and it's not a, just an only Black college or university or all Black college or university. And so I think people, of apparent, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, are kind of catching on to that best kept secret, but I think it's all for the best. Um, I was also very impressed by all of the resources that you mentioned, James, and I'm very jealous about not paying for textbooks. I still have a vendetta against textbook companies <laughs> from my college experience. Um, and then also was just blown away by everything that you had to said, say about the teachers and um, their grade and constantly being top of the schools in Virginia. So again, thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Um, thank you, Sujatha, for hosting and walking us through all the questions. And thank you to TJAG and our allies, um, especially David, for helping to coordinate all of this. And Jorge for sticking in there and doing all of the translation for this as well. Um, so once again, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be putting this online on demand for everyone to get more information and um, you know, go back and learn about all of those great scholarships as well. So thanks again and have a good evening. Thank you for having us. It's been our pleasure.